chamfer and a chamfer and a flat section at the top. That tooth there is perfect. Dave here, how are you? Today I'm going to share a bit of a secret with you. I'm going to show you how to cut melamine board both sides as clean as a whistle so you don't get any chip out. Well I'm going to do it on a cabinet saw without a scribing blade and I will give you a perfectly clean cut. No tear out, no chip out whatsoever. Now I am using a high quality blade. Now this blade here, I'll give you a little bit of disclosure. I was given this blade and another one by Promac in Australia. Now the reason they gave me that blade was I've made a very nice display for them. I made it out of some really nice Australian hardwood. So they use that at the shows. So if you see that at one of the shows, you know who made it. I'm going to put the headset on because the camera here is going to give you a lovely close-up of what I'm talking about. Blade designed specifically for cutting melamine. Now this one has chamfer and a flat section at the top. Then we go back to being a full flat tooth, chamfer, chamfer and flat. Some people refer to this as a triple chip. Okay, so that's the blade. Now here's the trick. I'm going to wind this blade all the way down. Now you notice I haven't got a blade guard on here at the moment because this way you can't really use a blade guard unless you have one mounted on the roof and you lower it down over the top. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'll take it down and I find the handle. I'm going to take it down till it's around about two millimeters. Now the reason I've taken it down this low is we're going to score the underside of the board because the arc here is extremely shallow. We're not cutting down and tearing out the bottom of the board. We're just going to do a scribe. So what we'll do is we'll run a bit of melamine through to start. And I've got the, I have the riving knife on behind as well. It's very important to use your riving knife whenever you can. I'm going to show, you have a look through this camera here. You'll see this edge right the way along here is absolutely beautifully clean. That's the top. When I turn her over, this is the underside. Now you see here, that little bit of chip out, you will be familiar with that. That will be all the way along. There it is there again. Okay, so we're going to do this so that we have absolutely no chip out at all. We'll put it over this way. Now the other thing is because the blade is going to be not seen, make sure that you're using a push block of some sort. A scribing cut. off. Let's have a look at that one first. See that? As clean, as clean, as clean can be. And very shallow, maybe two millimeters at the most. All right, now we're going to leave it there and we will raise it up so it's just above the height of the board. So we're going to go up to about there about 10 millimeters above. I don't want to bring it all the way up because it's going to be dangerous. Keep it down about there. And this is what I was talking about with the riving knife being there. If I finish the cut and bring timber back, it's going to hit there. There's no way it's going to hit the back of the blade. These things are very, very good. Make sure you use them. It's just, it really isn't a, it's really not a hassle to use them. I don't understand why people don't. Okay, here we go. I'll get it started. Now you can see the profile there on the blade. See that? That's a beautiful profile. Push blocks. And the riving knife doing its job. Now I haven't moved those. Wait for the blade to stop. Now that is absolutely beautiful. This is the area that we'd done before. And this is the one I just cut. Not a mark anywhere. Now obviously it's helped along by that blade, but I'll tell you what, even using a cheaper quality blade, you will still get an extremely good cut from doing this method. It's beautiful. Now I'm going to do it with a, uh, 
a crosscut sled and I'll show you something as well. Here's a little thing with the mitre set segments. This is the one that I was talking about a few months back. I've realized that if you wanted to, you can set things from this straight away without even putting a mitre gauge in there. How you do it is you set up your angle and then you just get a sliding bevel, bring it down the side, line it up with the pins. There it is. <laughs> How magic is that? Now I can transfer that straight away to anything I want. I'm going to transfer it to the uh, crosscut sled over here. That's looking pretty good. Check it back here again. Beautiful. And we want to do a double check. Come back the other way. Absolutely glorious. Look at that. How could, I, lo I love these things. We're going to lower the blade till it's about one or two millimeters above the sled. It's a bit easier to see it from down here. There we go. That tooth there is perfect. Down just a touch more. Again, all we're doing is doing a scribe because we want the sled to stay in the same position. All right, turn on the dust. And here we go. Do a scribing cut. through the back and then we can raise the blade lovely and go again turn the saw off I'll leave the ear protection on because I'm going to show you how good this is. Look at that. Absolutely nothing. Other side. Oh, how good is this? That is just magic. Let's have a look at this. Now you would swear that, that has come off a saw that's got a scribing blade. Look at that. Now I said to you, and then look at around the corner. See the difference? Look at that. That's what I was getting until I woke up to myself. Beautiful. Now I did say I was going to show you how to do it on here as well. First things first, I'm going to lower this blade down. And again, thanks to Promac for giving me those saw blades. It's fantastic. Makes the world go round. All right. Over here, I'm going to swing the cameras around. Now we're going to do a similar thing with the capex. Most sliding compound miter saws have got the capacity to setting the depth. Now just here, I have a little control arm that's got a thread on it. So I can set the depth that the cut will be. So at the moment, I've set it to about there. Now let's check that that's going to work all right. I want it to scribe from the top. Remember, with the table saw, the blade is underneath. We're going to do a scribing cut underneath, then full height. We're going to do the same thing with this. It is so easy. Where I've lowered the capex down, the head down, and I've adjusted this little guy here, and I'm going to do a cut across the surface. Then I'm going to raise this up, like so, and do a full depth cut. How cool is this? There we go. So that one, and then that one. Alrighty. So I'm going to put my earmuffs on because I'm a very good person. Okay, here we go. With the depth set to about two millimeters. Scribing pass. I'm going to hold on to it with my left hand there. I don't want it to move. And then I will release the trenching part and we'll go again. Wait for it to stop and up. All right, there we go. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Let's check it against a little bit of white so we can make sure it's 
Perfect. Beautiful. And very, very nice. Once you put your edge tape on, it's going to look absolutely magic. Don't forget, click that like button down there. It's just down there. And also down here is a picture of me. <laughs> click on my face. That'll get you subscribing to the channel. I'll take you through to the way to do it. And as I say, the likes help the channel along. Check in the description box below for all the links. I throw up links to things that I've used. Okay then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.